Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? So I've been working on this master closet remodeling job and that involves transforming two small his and hers closets into a single master closet that's much larger. Uh, so I'm taking out the dividing wall between the two closets and I've expanded the side wall outward to make room for some cabinetry. And it's the cabinetry that I'm gonna build in this video. So let's get started. <laughs> I'll start by cutting the sheets of plywood in half lengthwise and these will be used for the sides of the cabinet and each cabinet will be 24 inches deep. And then I'll run each piece through the table saw one more time so that they will all be the same width. Next, I cut all the side pieces to length using my track saw. And then with my router, I cut the rabbits and the dados that are gonna hold the cross members. Next, using my crosscut sled, I'll cut the tops and the bottoms of the cabinets, as well as the shelves that go in the middle to connect them together. These first cabinets I'm making are going to be for clothes hanging rods and there's going to be three of them and they're going to be two levels. So six clothes hanging rods total across the one wall and each one will allow about 42 inches of height. And for these cabinets, they're going to be open at the back, so I'm going to have these strips of wood uh, held in place with pocket screws, and these strips are what will hold the cabinet against the wall. So the screws into the studs will go through these strips. And now it's ready to glue up with the top and the bottom, the shelf in the middle. And then the strips with the pocket screws.
and it glued up nice and square. And now I'm cutting some thin strips of poplar that I will glue on as edge bending for the plywood. And now for the top and the shelf in the middle, I'm using a piece of poplar that's a little bit wider. And that will add some strength to the plywood and also make it appear thicker. These cabinets are all gonna be painted, so I'm using some wood filler to fill the nail holes and to fill any gaps. I'll clean up the edge banding with a flush trim router bit, and then I'll do some sanding. Now I'm going to start on the next two cabinets, and these cabinets are going to have cupboards and a set of drawers in the bottom. And this data was for the half inch plywood back. After testing a dry fit, it's ready to glue up.
Now that the carcasses for the cabinets are built, I'm going to start making the drawer fronts and the cabinet doors. I'm cutting a slot down the center of the door rails and, and styles, and this will hold the plywood. And the way that I get the slot perfectly in the center is by making the first cut and then flipping the board around end to end and then cutting again. I'm cutting all the pieces to length using a stop block on the end of my miter gauge. Now I'm cutting tenons in the door rails and these are going to fit into the slots that I cut into the door styles. And I'm just using a regular table saw blade with a flat top grind to cut the tenons. Now the first door is ready to glue up. And then with a Forstner bit, I can cut the recesses for the European style hinges.
Next, using half inch plywood, I will cut all the pieces for the drawers. Now switching to a blade with a flat top grind, I'm going to cut the slot where the plywood will fit into the drawer sides. I'm going to assemble the drawer sides with glue and pocket screws. And making the drawer fronts is very similar to making the doors. It's the same style, just a smaller scale.
I'm at the client site now in the closet and I'm using this shelf pin drilling jig to drill all the holes for the adjustable shelves. When drilling the holes for the door handles, I like to put a block of wood behind the holes so that there's no tear out. Now I'm installing the drawer slides and I definitely would have done this in my workshop if I'd had the opportunity, but this job site was an hour and a half away from my workshop, but it's just down the street from where my daytime job is. So I was doing this in the evenings after work and it was a little bit more challenging to do it this way, but it still worked out fine. This was a multi-week process because I could only fit one cabinet into my minivan each week. So I would bring one up on Monday morning, install it, and then the following Monday morning I would do the same with the next cabinet. I used a couple of blocks of wood under each drawer slide to make sure that they were parallel to the bottom and to make sure that the other drawer slide on the other side of the drawer was of the same height. To attach the drawer fronts, I started with the bottom drawer, clamped it in place, and then screwed it in. And then to put the second drawer front on, I used an eighth inch piece of wood that the drawer front could sit on top of so that it had a consistent gap between the top and the bottom drawer fronts. And in this case, because I was unable to clamp the drawer front in place, I drilled the holes for the drawer handle and used the drawer handle screwed tightly to position the drawer front before screwing it in place. So the cabinet on the left hand side is for the wife and it has two cupboards and a set of drawers underneath. And then the cabinet for the husband, because he likes to hang his pants, has only one cupboard and then these hangers for his pants. And even though I only made two cabinets, I joined them together in the middle with another shelf and another top to make it appear as if it's three separate cabinets. Here's how it looked before. And here are a few photos of how it progressed.
So I got to ask, would you make it? <laughs>